Hey what is up guys and welcome back to the channel. So last week I put a poll up and basically asked what you wanted if I was going to do another themed week. Obviously I did the money grind week and uh, I put a little poll up basically for a more you know brand specific, brand focused uh, week and Porsche came out on top. So that is what we're going to do. So I had the idea of reviewing all of the uh, kind of 911 models we have within Gran Turismo 7. So that is where we're starting today with basically the earliest model of 911 we do have inside uh, Gran Turismo 7. That being the Porsche 911 Turbo, the 930 model. So let's get it started and I hope it's a, you know, a successful week and I hope we all have a, a bit of fun basically diving deep into you know, the Porsches and you know, all the other good stuff that's in the game. Um, to do with that, uh, you know, pretty iconic brand. Now, I'll admit I've never been the biggest fan. I've always found some of the designs very iconic, especially this one here. Um, but I've never been sort of like crazy about Porsche. But I know a lot of people, you know, are. They're very passionate about them. Um, so it's going to be kind of cool to see these cars grow on me. And I'll admit straight away they have by just basically running them in the game. So expect money guides, car reviews and all that good stuff. But focused around the Stuttgart brand. So to avoid a bit of confusion on how this works and how the cars are ranked, um, I'll give a bit of an overview to any new viewers that may be around. Um, people that have been around these reviews for a while will kind of know how this works. But essentially we take the car in its bog standard form, uh, take it around a hot lap on the Nordschleife and basically see where it ends up on our lap time leaderboard. Then we'll modify it as much as possible and take it around the high speed ring on our modified lap time leaderboard to kind of see where it comes out there. And it's uh, a pretty cool contrast between, you know, bog standard car and heavily modified insanity. Um, so that's kind of how these reviews work. I'll obviously give you some opinions and how the car kind of feels. Um, and I'll give you some kind of facts and, you know, price points of the car when it comes to Gran Turismo 7. So let's get into the review. So when it comes to acquiring this car for yourself, it's rather quite easy to be honest. So you will need to complete the GT CAF menu book number 31. It's the uh, the Porsche one, I believe, and it's the Nürburgring event that you need to do to be able to get this car. If you're not that far into the game, sometimes it does appear in the used car dealer for around about 220,000 credits. And let's be honest, it's one of the most kind of timeless designs ever put into a car model um so yeah i'd definitely look into kind of picking one up just for the you know the pure pedigree this car has so the model we have in gran Turismo 7 is the 1981 model it's all rear wheel drive engine in the back and it's putting out 295 brake horsepower with an insane turbo attached to it um, you know rightfully nicknamed the widow maker because it was killing its drivers for years um, it's probably the point where kind of Porsche went for the most insane thing they could do, which was taking an already kind of renowned, you know, sports car back in the day, even when it first appeared, the 911, and basically strapped a huge turbo to it, um, and that, you know, awesome wing that they have at the back. For me, this is the most iconic looking, you know, Porsche 911 model. Um, I think we all know what it looks like, them big frog eyes at the front, you know, them big, you know, front and rear bumpers, that nice little wing, the, you know, the lined back brake lights and such. I just think it's such a cool design and uh, they've never really strayed too far away from like the core kind of look. Um, you can always tell a Porsche 911 even, you know, up to this day with the kind of body style it has and uh, for me like I said the most iconic is this one here the 930 you know the 911 turbo absolute engineering insanity to today's standard it may not feel like the fastest car in the world but you can definitely tell like you know back in the early 80s and such this car was just insanely quick and uh, you can kind of see why it got its name so driving this car from standard it is very happy to get its rear end out now it may just be me or it may just be sort of the age of the car it's not to the point of you know some of the really snappy 60s race cars we have um, although you know it's happy to get its back end out you always feel like you can kind of get it under control 
Um, at no point during my time in its standard form did I feel like the car was, you know, too much or too powerful or, you know, it was going to absolutely send me into a barrier. And I was quite happy, and you'll probably see throughout this uh, kind of, you know, lap that we're doing here that I'm quite happy to kind of sit with the back end sliding out and just kind of controlling it and having a whole heap of fun. And uh, I feel like that's kind of, you know, may sound like it's taken away from that Widowmaker nickname this car was given. Um, but, you know, don't let it fool you. This car is definitely a bit of a handful. You know, it's an older car. It's got, a, you know, an old style turbo strap to it. Um, you know, it loves getting its rear end out. It is a bit of a handful, but, you know, a confident driver should be able to kind of reel it in and uh, get the most out of this car. And I definitely felt like, you know, I got quite a bit out of this car. It was more, I guess, speedier than a four. Obviously, it's got only a four speed manual transmission. Um, very long gear ratio. So a good thing with that is that you're not ch chopping and changing gears too much through the corners. Um, obviously, when you're doing some cars, it really upsets the balance. Um, you can basically just put it in like second, third, slide around with the rear end out and basically just have a whole heap of fun. And uh, one of the best things for me when it comes to this car, well, it's the sound design. Have a listen to this. To me, that is one of the most beautiful engine notes ever you know created it's uh, certainly uh, an awesome iconic sound and it may sound you know kind of muted to today's standard of like high revving screeching uh, screaming supercars but to me you know that that really sort of bassy groany sound is just absolutely iconic and uh, definitely you know up there is one of the best sounding cars in history really um, in my opinion you may disagree but I absolutely love the sound of this thing. Now, one thing I'm gonna, you know, you know kind of touch on is the fact that, you know, coming into this Porsche week and seeing it get so many votes and beating, you know, to me, one of my favorite brands, which is Ferrari, uh, seeing it kind of top that, I thought, oh, here we go. Like, I've never, never been the biggest fan of Porsche. Now, I'm a huge fan of their classic designs, um, but when it comes to their more modern cars, I feel like they're just kind of there. While I appreciate the performance aspect of them and kind of what they do with the cars, um, you know, the more recent Porsches from like 2000 onwards, I've just found very kind of, you know, a bit dull and a bit there. Um, but I, I kind of had my eyes opened when touching on sort of this classic machine. And I kind of thought, you know what? this is a good place to start you know maybe just maybe towards the end of the week i will really come to appreciate you know porsche for what they are which is an amazing you know brand in themselves they've got a rich motorsport history they're always successful in what they do they've produced some of the most mental cars through the years and um yeah i can you know i can give credit where it's due and i, I really feel like this will kind of be the week where I really start to open my eyes and just kind of love the brand for what they are. And um, I can kind of see why people, you know, really, really do, you know, love this Stuttgart brand. So what is this car actually like in terms of Gran Turismo 7? The brakes are fine. The handling's fun. Um, obviously, it's not the best. Like, it is, you know, a bit of a handful, but it's very, very fun to drive. Um, you, you know, as you get used to the way this car is, um, I feel like it really starts, show, you know, starts showing its strong points. It feels fast. That four-speed manual with the long gears feels awesome to use. Um, the fact that you're not chopping and changing your gears constantly, and you just get that awesome engine note. Like performance-wise, there's nothing wrong with this car. It genuinely okay in, in the kind of weightiness to it, and the kind of, you know, I guess slower top speed you can kind of tell it's an older car but when you're driving it it just doesn't feel like you know an old car in a weird kind of way um, it feels very very sort of I guess joyous to drive and it feels alive and fun and that's you know credit to Porsche and you know credit to the creators of Gran Turismo for making the car feel great um, definitely one of the more I guess fun laps that I've put in in, uh, in Gran Turismo 7 
in a standard car. Sometimes they feel dull, but then sometimes you jump in a car and you really just feel like that car's alive and you don't really need to do much to it. So yeah, let's, uh, let's have a look on the onboard. So interior design wise, it's nothing kind of exceptional to today's standard, but there's always something awesome about seeing the interiors of these classic cars. You know, that big steering wheel, those analog dials, that four speed manual getting chopped and changed. Um, it just seems like a really nice place to be. And, uh, you know, the detailing Grand Turismo 7 interiors, you know, we all know it's, uh, you know, awesome detail. They'll, they'll go down to the smallest details in these things. And it's kind of great to see. Um, and the main thing I kind of like to keep an eye on is just watching the driving you know, work. So where I've put the inputs in is basically, you know, doing the exact same thing. And it just feels alive in this cockpit. And I think it really sort of complements the car itself because the car is alive. It feels alive. It's always, you know, keeping you on edge, but always being fast and, uh, you know, useful. And, you know, it's just an awesome feeling. So here's the individual sector times if you're interested in that. As you can see overall we did an 8 minute 16.636. Now we know this car's not going to be competing for an overall top 20. I believe that's in sort of like the 6 minute 40s at the lower end. Um, but you know I feel like this car I believe comes in the 500 pp category. So we'll see, kind of see where it comes out overall against the rest of the 500 cars we've tested. So in the 500 category, it comes out second. It's beaten the likes of a 96 Evo 4 with four-wheel drive and a, even a 2010 Sirocco R. So that's a pretty insane time. It's like five-second gap to the Evo 4, which, like I said, has four-wheel drive. And uh, I believe it's putting out just a little bit less in terms of horsepower. So really, really impressive uh, time on the board for the, you know, the classic 81 911. And now it is that time again. Say hello to this. Now, if you're into, you know, your custom cars or custom Porsches, you'll know exactly what this car is replicating. It is the Midnight Racing Porsche 911. As soon as I saw this livery, I had to put it on because I wanted to make this car as insane as possible, putting out as much horsepower as possible, where it can light up the wheels and put over 200 miles an hour um you know down the straights of the high speed ring so say hello to this beauty so straight away i knew where the weakness was in this car it was its handling it has that awful snap but it's to be expected but in a straight line while well, this thing was a, an absolute bullet it was topping out i believe at around about 199 to 200 miles per hour in a 1981 Porsche so really impressive as we hit our top end just before the braking zone here we're going to go down to about third gear here and we're going to power out of that corner now the car is moving around a lot you know especially under the braking it's a classic car it wants to throw you in the wall and uh, taming this beast well it felt great and just honestly I was kind of surprised although it kind of was difficult to get a hold of when I was nailing some of these corners it felt really really good and uh, obviously the acceleration and top speed of this thing was just incredible I did not expect it to be just this quick this felt more like the yellow birds of the uh, the rough brand um, of old so really awesome to see that we can customize this classic car to the most insane you know standards so yeah a 200 mile an hour missile from 1981 so awesome lap but let's see where it ends up overall so it's only the third car we've allowed at the high speed ring. I will be going back by the way. And it's come out second. It has beaten the fully upgraded Sirocco R. You know, a car that is what, 30, you know, 29 years newer. Um, <laughs> just by, by about four seconds uh, back from the Z Performance 23. So really, really impressive time. And like I said, it's an absolute missile in a straight line. So that's it. Thank you so much for joining me on this opening video to Porsche Week. I hope we can, you know, kind of look into this brand. In
in a lot of detail get through all the 9-11 reviews do some money guides and just have a whole heap of fun on the channel there will be an update for Gran Turismo on the Thursday so I believe there's actually a Porsche in that pack so expect to you know another car review and a, a deep dive into that um because it is I believe the Cayman GT4 um, so that'll be kind of awesome to you know look into and it's pretty awesome timing for it to get released on I believe the Thursday um, so I'll kind of jump on that as much as possible um, and kind of look into the update and you know help you out with all the events and good stuff alongside this Porsche week um, so yeah just expect the usual content there will be quite a bit of content this week and uh, yeah massive thank you don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one cheers guys peace